anyone who knows even the basics about web development has probably come across the term percent encoding. This is where you can encode a character like, say, a slash, an equal sign, a question mark, these symbols that have special meaning inside of a URL, and then encode them in a form using percent signs to make it so that you can send that data without it actually being a problem. But percent encoding isn't the only kind of encoding used in a web URL. Traditionally, only ASCII characters were supported inside of a web URL. This is basically because the English-speaking world had a lot of power in the way that the internet was actually formed. But I found out recently, this isn't actually the case anymore, because since 1996, and slowly improving upon it since then until it was standardized in 2012, there has been a system being made up known as internationalized domain names. This basically allows you to take Unicode symbols and then have them in a URL. But it's not as easy as it might sound. While there is no problem at the web browser level, web browsers have supported Unicode basically since the day it was created. The problem exists at the DNS level. DNS is the system we use to go and take the human-friendly URL and then convert that into an IP address. While IPv4 addresses are perfectly usable by a person, once you get to IPv6, it becomes a lot to handle. Plus, with the fact that IP addresses might occasionally change because there are multiple servers all pointing to the same URL, and a bunch of other reasons why you don't want people working directly with an IP. But when it comes to DNS, there is no technical reason why it can't support Unicode. It's more of a problem of history because Unicode, as it currently stands, can work with arbitrary binary strings. So, Unicode has not always existed. Unicode basically is the standardized way of representing international symbols. Prior to that, you would have some English-speaking nations using ASCII, Japan would have its own encoding, Greece would have its own encoding, South Korea would have its own encoding, and when you have all of these countries with their own different encoding systems, many of which do actually overlap with each other, it becomes very, very difficult to have one standardized system. So instead of trying to work with that, basically all of that was scrapped and we just went with Unicode. Even today, the de facto standard encoding for working with DNS is LDH ASCII. This is letter, digit, hyphen ASCII. Basically, this is a subset of ASCII that doesn't ever change. If you were to go and switch every single DNS server over to Unicode, this would basically require the entire web to be upgraded. This is effectively impossible. The other problem with Unicode is that Unicode isn't a set standard. Every year or every couple of years, new symbols are being added into Unicode, and doing that every single time would be very, very difficult to maintain. So it would either have to always be lagging behind, or we'd need to find another way. Luckily, there is another way, and that is where Punicode comes in. So Punicode is an encoding system that was proposed to the IETF in 2003. And the general idea here is, instead of trying to add new symbols into what DNS can support, why not just encode Unicode symbols into ASCII symbols? You don't need to go and re-engineer the entire internet, and it just works. Now, I don't understand the maths behind it. Here's an implementation of an encoder and decoder written in Python, but I don't particularly need to understand it. If you would like to test it, there is a website called punicoder.com where basically we can go and write, let's say, I don't know, uh, washoku, for example. That would be Japanese style food. And convert that to punicode and it looks something like so. Now, every single punicode string is going to be encoded in the exact same way. It's going to start with xn dash dash. The reason why it's like this is because you need some way to identify that what you're looking at actually is punicode rather than just regular symbols. So punicode isn't always going to activate for every single URL. If you have something that's, I don't know, just in ASCII characters, for example, like say, hello world, and we try to convert that into punicode, that's not actually going to work. But if instead of doing that, we do hello world and then include some Unicode there, it is going to produce a slightly different result. As we can see, it sticks the ASCII inside of the Punicode string. 
because there is a space there, if this was in a URL, it would also be percent encoded. Now, there is a set of symbols inside of Unicode that you might not expect can actually be used as a domain name. And those symbols are emoji, but emoji can be converted into punicode. Looking back at the history of emoji domains, both of the first two were actually registered two years prior to the RFC for Punicode actually being finalized. Basically, this means before Punicode was a widely accepted standard. Punicode still did exist prior to that point. It just may not have worked in most places, and in fact, probably didn't work in most places. Both of these first two aren't actually in use anymore. The first one points you to a Wix page. The second one, I believe, is a completely dead link. Now, there is a serious problem that exists with Unicode domains, especially because most people are used to them just being in ASCII. If I was to show you this right here, this is what seems like a link to wikipedia.org. It's not, though. So if we go to this site, it doesn't actually work, and the link in the URL actually translates completely into Punicode. So we know from before that if we just go and put ASCII into a Punicode translator, it just prints the ASCII back out. So this right here isn't actually ASCII. There is a lot of symbols in Unicode that look like ASCII symbols, and there are ways to spoof basically any URL. Depending on the browser you're using, it is going to change the way it interacts with these Unicode domains. If you're using symbols that look like they might be ASCII symbols, for the most part, it's just going to dump out Punicode because if like some regular person sees a URL that is completely different from what they went to, hopefully that will show them maybe this is the thing you actually meant to go to. If it's something like, say, an emoji though, usually it'll just show the emoji. Emojis can't usually be used to spoof real addresses. However, to ensure that spoofing can't happen though, the easiest fix for any company is to do the exact same thing PayPal has done when they bought PayPay.com. Just buy all of the different iterations that are using Unicode. But to stop this from happening anyway, most of the reputable domain name registers don't let you just go and register literally anything you want. So they'll have a subset of TLDs you can use and a subset of symbols you can use. So if you want to use like, I don't know, uh, dot fish, sure. You can use Chinese simplified, Chinese traditional, French, German, and Spanish if you're trying to use Namecheap, or if you want to use like dot app, you can only use Japanese and Latin, for example. And this is the usual way it is handled. Less reputable domain name registers might have different ways to approach it, but ultimately it can be addressed at the TLD as well. So a top level domain is things like .com, .au, .ca, .org, .fish apparently. And while there is no technical reason why some symbols aren't supported on every single top level domain, that is the way it works. Usually what you're going to see happen is the country specific TLDs will only support symbols used in that region. So for example, if it's like .jp, it's probably only going to support the Japanese subset of Unicode. When it comes to emoji, however, Finding a TLD that actually supports them can be incredibly difficult. Maybe it's because whoever's running the TLDs doesn't like emoji, but there's only about maybe 10 or so, and most of the domain name registries just don't support emoji either. There are two notable ones I do know about, one of them being iHeart.ws and also Domain Noji as well. I'm not sponsored by either of these companies, and I haven't actually used their services before, so I don't know how well they actually work, but there's not many options out there if you do want an emoji URL. So I don't know, let's just search for this one right here. And it's probably already sold. So, hey, oh, it's not sold apparently. $5 you can get uh, Devil Burger, I guess. That takes us into the next problem, not just emoji URL, but general Unicode as well. So it's not going to be a problem for language specific stuff. If you have a, I don't know, a uh, South Korean blog, and you're using Korean symbols inside of the domain name. That's not going to be a problem for SEO. In fact, it might actually improve it. But when you have emoji, 
Unless, like, your company is called Devil Burger, I guess. Like, finding that URL is going to be a little bit harder. There are ways you can get around that by having proper tagging on your website and making it so it actually does show up properly on search engines like Google, but it is still going to affect the way your site actually is ranked. There's another pretty big problem with Unicode URLs, especially when you start getting into different languages. Not every language is like English and read left to right. Some languages are right to left. So how should that actually be represented? Should you show the URL as right to left? What happens if you have some left to right text and some right to left text in the same URL? What do you do about that? Do you like split it up across the entire screen? That's still a question that's trying to be answered. At this stage, it's just like, this problem is too hard do everything left to right, and we can deal with it later. Maybe you already knew that Unicode URLs exist, but I hope today you learnt maybe some of the problems that exist with them and how they actually work a little bit behind the scenes. So if you like this video and you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, I, I always forget which direction I'm supposed to point because it's actually backwards. Uh, check out my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay link in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week and upload about five or so YouTube shorts. And then this channel's available over on Odyssey. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.